Okay, one last topic I want to touch on in this chapter is how we go about identifying outliers and influential points. For outliers, we'll actually have a number that we can crunch for this. It's not one and a half times the IQR like it was in chapter two, but we'll have something to actually solidify, yes, this data point is an outlier or no, it's not. Influential points, I'm not gonna get as technical on that. I just wanna give you some, uh, some theory behind it and just look at a few examples. So an outlier is a data point separated from the rest of the set. All right, an outlier is an observation with a large residual and we define large as being more than two standard, devi standard deviations away from the average residual value. And I'm gonna show you how you get this, this letter S, this standard deviation, and we'll double it, you'll see. And it won't be too much to identify outliers at that point. An observation that causes the value of the slope in your LSRL to be considerably different from what it would be had the observation been removed is influential. So I'm gonna talk about how we spot influential points. Typically influential points, these are points that are isolated in the X direction. So I'm gonna put this here. These are points typically isolated in the X direction. All right. Where outliers tend to be isolated more in the Y direction and have really large residuals. So we're gonna go through a few plots here and then we're just gonna try and see are those, those data points that I circled, are those outliers? Are they influential? Are they neither? Or are they both? That's what we're gonna try and put together. And we're gonna do this without formulas for right now. And then I'm gonna talk about how you could do this, at least for outliers, how you could use your calculator to check for outliers. All right, so let's think about outliers for a moment. Outliers have large residual values. And we've talked about residuals are always this vertical drop from your observed data value to the LSRL. So I'm gonna graph all of my residuals and I specifically, I really wanna graph this one. So let's take a look. This residual for the, the point that I've circled, would you say this is a relatively large residual? If you take a look, right, residual, 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 resid, 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 all of those, you can kind of get the feels for their average length, right? Maybe this is about an average length. This looks more than double that, right? This is a relatively large residual, and that's what, at least graphically, how we can identify that this is an outlier. Right? It's isolated, I would say, in the Y direction, right? It's all by itself down here at this Y value of about, I don't know, 55. And it's not isolated in the X direction. You can see its X coordinate is three. And we've got various points that, are, it, that have something, uh, that have X values similar enough to the number three. So basically what we're saying here is, we knew that if you had an X value of three, your Y values were supposed to be up here around 90 and for some reason this was down at 55. It's got a very large residual, right? And that's how graphically we can identify that outlier. So large residual. And again, I'm gonna give us a, a calculator to num number to crunch so we can tell for sure, yes, this is an outlier, no, it's not. All right, so let's take a look over here. Now, if you've been through trig in your math classes, you can see this is the beginning of a sinusoidal curve. And if you haven't been through trig, no problem. It's the beginnings of a sinusoidal curve, um, which is basically just a little a sine wave. It goes up and down and oscillates. But let's take a look at this point that I've circled and think about the residuals that are going through this, this regression plot. And then we wanna consider, is this residual large, relatively speaking? So let me draw a few residuals in here. All right, data point to line, data point, well, it's not a line, data point to sinusoidal curve. I don't wanna draw them all. I don't know that it's worth drawing all of them, but I think you get the idea, right? We've got a lot of residuals in here, and then we've got this bad boy. All right, so take a look at that residual. Relatively speaking, that looks pretty large, right? It looks large in comparison to all of these. So because of this large residual, 
we've definitely got a candidate for an outlier. So I would think this bad boy is an outlier. Again, to know for sure, I'll show you how you can crunch that number on your calculator, but this is definitely a candidate for an outlier. And it's not the only one, right? If I look, these points down here, they also have large residuals, relatively speaking. So I might actually have multiple outliers, but I just circled this one just so we could demonstrate it. And again, this ordered pair is isolated in the y direction. So you can see this y value is all by itself up here. It's not isolated in the x direction, right? We have ordered pairs pretty close to it here. So it's not isolated in the x direction. Left to right, there's points near it, but up and down, there's nothing near it. Isolated in the y direction, okay? All right, so let's try a few more. Right, so if we go over here, oops, let me get this all in view. So if we head to this third one, let's think about its residuals and see if we think, hey, this could be an outlier. So I'm gonna draw the residuals in and draw as many as you need until you get the idea. All right, and then we've got this. So if we take a look at this, this is not an outlier, right? It doesn't have a large residual. So I, I'm gonna put your, I have a small residual. All right, so this is not an outlier. But I want you to take a look at its isolation. You can see that in the x direction, right? This x coordinate is about 24. There is nothing near it in the x direction. Like that last x value we had was about 11. So there's this huge gap in the x direction. So this, this data point is isolated in the x direction. And that's the defining characteristic in terms of what makes you an influential point. So we would say this is influential. And what we're getting at when we say influential, because this point is all by itself, it is pulling the line towards it. Right? It's pulling the line towards it because there's no other points near it to counterbalance it. And you can imagine if this, this data point wasn't here, I'd have a different looking line. Right? It would look something like that if I didn't have that influential point there. But that point is influencing the line in that it's pulling the line towards it. So that's what we mean when we say influential. I'm pulling the line towards it, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this one. Let's look at it first through the lens of whether or not it's an outlier, and then we'll look at it whether or not it's influential. So in terms of outliers, let's start drawing residuals. All right, I'll draw a few in here. And then look at this outlier. Right? Relatively speaking, that is very large. So I'm gonna say I have a large residual, right? which is gonna tell me this point is an outlier. Okay. Now I'm gonna erase my residuals for a moment. And as I'm erasing this, I want you to imagine if this point wasn't here, what would the line look like? what would our LSRL look like? So if I erase all of these, and I know it's a little hard to imagine because everything's drawn in there permanently, but if this ordered pair wasn't here, if I didn't have this X value, I think the line would look more like this, right? I think that influential point, that ordered pair, is pulling the line up because this, this ordered pair is so far above what would have been the line of best fit. So it's pulling that line up, it's influencing the slope of that line. And also, if you take note, it's isolated in the x direction, right? If we move left to right, there are no points anywhere near it. So we have another observation that is isolated in the x direction. Which tells us this point is also influential. So we actually have an influential outlier in this graph. Okay, great, that happens sometimes, they can be both. Okay. All right, so let's 
let's scooch down to these next two. And like always, I would recommend if you have some time, push the pause button and see if you can come up with, are these three points influential, outliers, neither, or both? All right, so for this one, I didn't actually give you the LSRL. So we would have to just by hand kind of think about where that line would go. And I think that line would look something like this. I think this is decent enough for that line, okay? That's, that's not my worst line of best fit, but something like that. So let's think about A, right? If I'm looking at A, If I look at A, do I think it has, oops, let me put this residual here. Do I think it has a large, out, I'm sorry, a large residual, relatively speaking? It's kind of hard to say, actually, right? Because this one's large, this is a little bit larger. It Does it meet that threshold? And again, so this is a little bit more ambiguous. If, if I have the raw data, which we will in a moment, and I used my calculator, I could determine for sure if it was an outlier. But I'm going to say that in this case, I think it has a large-ish, that's not a technical term, large-ish ish residual. So I want to say it is a candidate for an outlier. I would need the raw data to assess it, but it's a candidate for an outlier. So it's on my radar. Now, in terms of whether it's influential, it's not isolated in the x direction. If I move left to right, I have plenty of points near me telling me, yeah, the y value should have been down here, but for some reason this was up here. So this is not isolated in the x direction. So this is not influential. All right, so I'm definitive on it's not influential. I would need the raw data to determine if it was an outlier, but it's, it's a candidate. It does have a large residual. I'm just not sure if it's large enough. All right, for B, if we look at B, it's got a small residual. So this is not an outlier. But on the flip of that, you can see B is isolated, right? There is no other data value close to B, so this is isolated in the X direction, which means this is influential. All right, this is drawing the line towards it, so it's influencing the slope of the line, okay? All right. Let's take a look at this last one. Let me draw some residuals in here. That's good enough to get, oops, to get a feel for it. And let's draw this data points residual. All right, so relatively speaking, this is not that large. There's many residuals in here that are actually larger. So this is, small, or I would say small or medium residual, but it's not large, right? All right, so this is not an outlier. But also, if you look at it, it's completely isolated in the x direction. There are no points anywhere near it isolated in x direction. So this is influential. And this is extremely influential. And here's what I mean by that. If you were to remove this, this ordered pair, this is a circle. This has basically got an R of zero. I would just have a straight up flat line going through it because there's no linear relationship. So this influences the line so much that it goes from being flat all the way to having a slope. It actually creates this artificial relationship because it looks like there's this line that climbs from this clump to this clump. But if you remove this, this has got some of, this is practically the worst correlation you can have. It's gonna be pretty cl close to R equaling zero. 
All right, so in a moment, I'm gonna flip over to my computer and we're gonna talk about were there any outliers present in data set one, two, 11, and 13? And I'm gonna actually show the calculations for one and two, and I would recommend you practice 11, 13, and then check those answers against the Canvas key. All right, thanks gang. Hey, Math 43, so we're gonna go back through some of our older problems in this chapter and try and determine if there were outliers present in our data. So I am going to go through examples one and two, and then I would encourage you to try and mimic what I did in examples one and two, for examples 11 and 13. And keep in mind that the screenshots, the answers to all of these, are just towards the end of your packet on the next couple of pages. So I'll show you how I do it for one and two. You try it on 11 and 13, and then check your work. So let's just remind ourselves that if we're looking for outliers, that means we're looking for data points that have really large residuals. Large residuals, relatively speaking, and our measure for that is up here. It says an outlier is a data point separated from the rest of the data set. An outlier is an observation with a large residual, right, i.e. more than two standard deviations away from the average residual value. So we're going to go into a new part of our calculator that will get us our, our average residual value, it's going to be called S, kind of like a standard deviation. It's technically S sub E, but we're going to look at that number, we're going to double it, and then see if any residuals are larger than double that number. So with all that being said, let's take a look back at example one. So I'm going to click this all the way back to page one, all right, and let's get that data into view and determine if any of these observations were outliers. So if you remember, I would put my outsource percent into L1, my delay percent into L2. All right, so let's check that. I've got my data entry taken care of. If I look at my stat plot, it looks like I'm ready to go. I could hit zoom nine, and it looks like I, ooh, gosh, I was having some fun. What do I have in there? I, I don't even know what all of that is. Let me go clear that out. Um, yeah, who knows what that was. So let me hit zoom nine again. There is my, my equate or my scatter plot. So we're going to go into a slightly new part of our calculator. Um, it's new for us now, but when we start getting in on chapters eight, 10, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 13, we're going to visit this menu screen again. So here we go. I want you to hit stat. And this time, I want us to go over to the tests menu. Okay, so we're going to go all the way over here. Now, like I said, once we hit chapter eight, we're going to be in this drop down menu all the time. Okay, and, but the reason we're going into this menu now is because there's this one calculator function that gets us our average residual length, and that's what we want. Because again, outliers um, are, are observations that are more than two standard or two residual lengths away from the average residual length. So let me show you how you get your average residual length. How do you get your S? So you have to scroll way down. And depending on what calculator letter you have, it might be F, it might be E. I'm not sure. The TI-83s and TI-84s are a little bit different. So you're going to scroll all the way down. Or I'm lazy. I'm going to scroll up. And I need you to find the one that says linear regression t-test. And be careful, some calculators have linear regression t interval. All right, we do not want that one. And I, my understanding is the 83s do not have this, and some of the 84s do not have this. Um, and some of the 83s, not some, none of the 83s have this letter D, this Goff test, but a lot of the 84s do. So again, just depending on when you bought your calculator, uh, you might have certain functions in there. But we should all have linear regression t test somewhere. So let's go ahead. Hit that, okay? Here we go, so you're gonna have a lot of options, and for the most part, we're just gonna default on these. So our X variables were in L1, our Y variables in R are in L2. Leave this as one, leave this as the not equal to zero, but let's scroll down here to store regression equation, or just regression equation on this screen. And let's, this is where we drop our Y1. So we go vars, go to Y vars, Enter, enter, right? So I load up Y1, and I want you to hit calculate. So I'm gonna scroll down. You see calculates being, it's flashing. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and a whole bunch of stuff is gonna pop up. Now you're not gonna use most of this, all right? 
and you see this little down arrow key, so hit scroll down. Okay. So I know it's been a long time since we did example one, but this was your y-intercept. This was your slope. And here's the number I wanted, the 13.413. All right, you can see r squared and r down there, but really what I want us to get is this s value. All right, so I want the 13.413. I want you to remember that number. All right, so just maybe write it down on your paper right now, 13.413, okay? And what we're gonna do with that number, let me clear this out. Let me take 13.413, and I want to double it. All right, so I'm taking my average residual length and I'm doubling it. So here's the threshold, right? 26.826. Any residuals that are smaller than 26.826 are not considered outliers. You can think of that kind of like our safety zone, zero or anything below 26.826. Anything above 26.826, that's too far off. That's our outlier. So. I want to now look at all of my residuals and see if any of them are larger than 26.826. So if you remember all the way back, I think it was example 13, I can create a list of residuals. I'm going to go into stat. I'm going to edit this out. Let me go up into L3. All right. I would like it to auto-populate with all of my residuals, and then I'm going to check it against that number of 26.826. All right, so where was our residuals? You go second, stat. And again, it depends on your calculator. This calculator that I have on my computer is saying menu seven or option seven. So I'll hit seven. So I'm defining L3 to be my residuals. I'm gonna hit enter and then you see it auto populates, okay? Now just to remind you of that number, all right, let me scroll back here. Remember 26.826, that's our threshold for outliers. So let me go into L3 and let's take a look. All right. So I have this residual of negative 16. In absolute value, that is not bigger than 26.826. This is not an outlier. 1.68, not an outlier. Right? 3.47, not an outlier. So, so let's start scrolling. Did we see anything larger than 26.826? And, and I won't know until I scroll. So no, 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 no. Oh, look, 34. Right, so right there, 34, that is larger than 26.826. So 80, 70, that observation is an outlier. So we do have an outlier in this data set, or at least one. Let me check the rest. And our threshold was 26.826. So no, 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 no. Oh, and that's it. Okay, so there's our outlier. We had one. So observation 8070, what airline was that? Let's find Hawaiian airline. That was an outlier. Okay, good to know. All right, so I'm gonna hit the pause button on this. I'm gonna load up my data for example two, and then we're gonna come back and rerun this the exact same way. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with example two. And if you remember this example, this was about the price and quality rating for bike helmets. So again, I, I like to just start from the beginning, right? Anytime I have some data, data entry is always the first thing I want to do. Put my X's in L1, my Y's in L2. And let's take a look at that scatter plot. And let me just check, make sure I'm doing a scatter plot. Yeah, it is L1 against L2, not a residual plot this time out. So I will hit zoom nine. This was the one that was kind of messy. Um, so there's not a great linear relationship between them. That's okay. Um, are, we're tasked with determining were there outliers present. And if there were outliers present, the way we figure that out is we find S, we find our average residual length, and we double it. Okay, Any residual larger than double the average is an outlier. So let's take a look at what we have here. So I'm going to go back to my home screen. Instead of doing stat calc eight, if you want to do this, this outlier check, you have to go into a new part of your calculator. So here we go. We're going to hit stat. We're going to go over to tests, all right? And this is the calculator function that gives us that S value. I could give you the really long and convoluted formula for it. And actually, I think I pulled it up here on your book. So if you ever wanted to do this by hand, you have to figure out all of your residuals. You have to square them. And then you have to add them together. You have to divide that number by n minus 2. And then you have to square root it. So it's a pretty ugly formula 
to do by hand. It's not impossible. I, I get to be that person that says like, well, back in my day, I had to do it. It's not impossible, but it's just nicer if our calculator does it for us. And it does, but it's over in this, this new part of our, our, our menu. So we're gonna do stat tests, all right, and then go find the linear regression t-test. Okay, so specifically t-test, not t-interval. All right, so we'll click on this, and then pretty much everything defaults, right? You see L1, L2, great, that's where I have them. Leave this as a one, leave this as a not equal. If this is empty, go ahead and fill Y1 in it. Um, I guess it just remembered Y1 from the last time I ran it on example one. So I'm just gonna scroll all the way down here and hit calculate. And a whole bunch of stuff is gonna pop up and we're, we're only looking for the letter S. So I hit enter. And I see all this stuff. We're not gonna worry about T, the p-value, degrees of freedom. We'll talk about this later on, right? Stuff like this is coming in chapter eight, chapter nine. We just want the S. There it is, there's S, 10.03. So I want us to remember 10.03, if you need to jot that down, we're ultimately gonna double that number. So I'm gonna take 10 point and I'll go 034 if I remember that third decimal. I'll multiply it by two. All right, now this is the number I really wanna keep in my head. So 20.068, that is the threshold for outliers. Any residual that's above that value is an outlier. Any residual below that value is not an outlier. And that's true on the positive or negative end. Okay, so let's see what we got here. I need to go create a residual list and then remember 20.068. So let me go into my lists. Let me go over to L3. And again, make sure L3 has the black background. And let's define that list to be our residuals. So second and stat. And mine is option seven. And as soon as I hit enter, my calculator will auto-populate all of my residuals. Okay, great, let's see what we get. All right, a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my home screen for just a moment to remember my threshold. What was it? 20.068, okay, here we go. So let me look at L3. All right, this is not larger than 20.068. So no, not larger than 20.068. This residual, not larger, not, 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 no, no, 20.0, no, 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 oh, and that's it. Okay, so then there it is. There are no outliers present in this data set. So that's how you can determine if there are outliers present. Uh, run linear regression t-test, which is in that weird menu, right? So instead of stat calculate, we're gonna go stat test, and in my calculator, it's stat test F. Run it, find the S number. Whatever the S value is, double it, all right? Once you get that, just keep that in mind. That's, that's creating your safety zone for outliers. And then populate L3 with your residuals and check your residuals against that threshold number. Anything above that threshold, outlier. Anything below it, not an outlier. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. See you soon.